there's a bee in the carob in the carob blossom. There was a bee in the carob blossom. It's been raining, so there aren't so many bees around because there's less pollen around. But there's lots of carob blossom in that tree. Lots. It smells like semen. That's what carob blossom smells like. If it hadn't been raining and if there was plenty of dryness and the pollen was dry, there'd be hundreds of bees, thousands of bees here. But it's been raining overnight, so there aren't many bees around today. And it's cloudy. Bees don't like the cloudiness much, do they? I think that is an hermaphrodite tree, that one. Judging by the flowers. A source of carob chocolate, this tree. This carob tree is a female tree. You can see the female parts of the flower look like junior beans, don't they? They do. Quite a lot of old beans in this tree that weren't picked. Let's have a look at some of them. They're silhouette anyway. Quite a lot of beans still up there. There we are, carob beans. Carob beans hanging in the tree. You can read about carob beans, what, in the prodigal son story in the Bible. He, apparently he was obliged to uh, look after pigs or something, attend swine and just eat carob beans that the, uh, the pigs ate. That's all he had to eat, apparently, according to that story, if you believe it. I can't say I'm crazy about tough old carob beans. I like carob chocolate that they sell in the shops, yes, but, well, they're very hard, hard to chew. If you cook them up, process them, know how to mill them, grind them, roast them and grind them, that would be fun. Nice evergreen shade tree anyway. They live to about 100 years, I think. This tree is a female anyway, it's covered in beans. They have male, female, and they have hermaphrodite trees as well. And the males smell of semen, of course. The hermaphrodite trees smell of semen, and if there's lots of bee activity, the uh, female trees are so, have so much po male po yes, pollen on them that they smell like semen too. So if you ever walk under a carob grove, you can smell a strong scent of what smells like human semen or sperm, if you like. Hermaphrodite. It's got those little white things are the uh, would-be beans, and the other things are where the pollen is, so it's bisexual, isn't it? It's bisexual. It, no, it's like a snail. It has two sexes. I'm trisexual, of course, I'll try anything. Yes, that's a... I'm not a botanist, of course, but that looks to me like um, an hermaphrodite one. I don't know if I've got one that's... I probably have one that's male only. I've certainly got hermaphrodite ones and uh, female ones. This one has a few beans on it, so I know, <laughs> I know it's capable. <laughs> I know it's capable of doing both. This is the first tree that I showed you. I'm just having a look carefully and considering them. These blossoms are 
Well, there's no little junior beans there, are there? They're all just little white stamens, aren't they? That green thing in the middle is just the thing for holding all the stamens onto. There are no little junior beans. They'd be white in colour if they were there. So they're all male flowers. I think um, so I think they can have the uh, male flower and the female flower on the one, is it called brat or whatever, but um, these are all male anyway. That's what they look like, the male flowers. If it was dry and sunny, there'd be lots of bee activity here today. That's all male. So this is a male tree. There's no sign anywhere of little junior carabines. I've never seen uh, beans on this tree now that I come to think about it. I've only seen beans on the female tree or the bisexual tree. So there's no junior be uh, there's no flowers here that resemble uh, junior beans at all. So this is definitely a male flower. This carob tree, this carob tree way down the paddock is male too. It's got no telltale little white bean, beanlets or whatever you like to call them. It's only got the uh, stamens, anthers, whatever they're called. It's only got the male parts. So it will never have beans on it, this one. Still, you need both, both sexes, don't you? And you need the in-between sexes too. That's how life is. Sexuality is, well, it's throughout, it transcends the whole of nature, doesn't it? Sexuality. It does. You can see here on this bisexual hermaphrodite tree that it's got those little white beanlet things. They're the little, are they called, what, what are they called? Ovules or ovums or something? I'm not sure what they're called. And the, the greener part is the stamens, so it's both sexes. This one only has a few beans on it because, well, it's both sexes, isn't it? It can't do both things. It's both sexes. And you can see both flowers are on the uh, one, uh, one th uh, branch, but I think I, ha I vaguely recall seeing uh, trees that have the uh, separate uh, little, uh, uh, little separate flower branches on each uh, tree of both sexes, separate. This has got them mixed together, but I'm sure I've seen them with individual little uh, clumps of male and individual clumps of female, but I, I might be remembering wrong. I think I have seen them both separate, but this tree's got them on the one, on the one thing anyway. What are they called? Racemes or something? I'm not sure. I'm not a botanist, as I say. You see these female flowers here from a female tree? See how they've got little things that uh, have beans on them? The white part is going to become a bean. That's what the female parts look like. And, oops, reaching with my other hand. Oops. Where, where are you? Out of focus. Anyway, that is... That's the female flower there. And that's the male flower. And the bisexual flower is, well, what, 100 meters away. That's a male flower. Male carob flower. This is a female with its little baby beans on it. This male smells like semen. The female's flower will smell like semen if it's covered in uh, pollen. I'll just go and do a close-up of the uh, hermaphrodite flower as well. It's nice to be able to identify the trees growing in your grounds. This estate's so big, I, I've got carob trees all over the place. So again, so again, here we are. There's the female with its uh, white things, little white baby beans. There's a male. There's a male and female beside each other. And this one is bisexual. It's got both characteristics. 
as I recall to the beans on the bisexual tree are a they're not only fuel but they're, they might be a little bit smaller so that's how life is and sexuality does transcend the whole of nature you've got stra <laughs> straight carob beans <laughs> And you've got bisexual gay ones and uh, intersex, <laughs> intersex ones, whatever. Thanks for watching anyway, if you've watched this far. Thanks for watching, looking at plant sexuality. Female, male and intersex. See you for now. Look at them, aren't they cute? <laughs> so cute and tiny. What I meant to say was, what I meant to say was, sexuality uh, pervades the whole <laughs> of nature, not transcends the whole of nature. It pervades the whole of nature. There's male, female, and intersex. See ya.